Hello and welcome back to Radio 2. So this is lesson 8 of 15 of practical programming and making content. And today we're going to be looking at performance and formatics. Okay, so today's lesson is on page 45 up until 64 in chapter 6 in Valerie Geller's book, Beyond Powerful Radio. So performance and formatics. Radio communication utilizes that theater of the mind idea. And the people on the radio must talk in pictures. Okay, I've mentioned this quite a few times to you. The same principle applies to all material written and produced for on-air use as well. When you listen to radio, you notice people who sound spontaneous. They make their work look natural and easy. It seems these people never make a mistake on air. Or if they do, you hardly notice it. Um, or the show just takes an unexpected twist and it gets even better from there. Then there are broadcasters who seem pained and uncomfortable when things go astray. So when things go wrong for them, you can pick it up immediately. It can make you extremely nervous to listen to people reacting to a situation in this way. How can you make sure that you sound like one of the naturals when you're on air and not like the others that seem pained and uncomfortable? Accomplished individuals um, and seasoned on-air talent always gives you that feeling that they are in control no, mid no matter what happens. This skill can be learned. The people you admire on air have mastered some basic techniques that carry them through the most difficult situations. Their experiences, successes as well as failures, keep in mind they probably, well, keep in mind there has been failures, are what make them so adept now. You can't avoid some of the unpredictable aspects of this business, unfortunately. But you can learn reliable techniques to improve your show, which is what we're going to be looking at. You can escape certain traps by practicing a few elementary performance points. And there are things you can do to self-correct um, should the show be, begin taking a turn for worse. Okay. So starting to look at those performance points. The first one is pick topics which you really pick topics about which you really care. Okay. So topics that you actually really care about. A great on a personality or presenter can make selecting a sofa interesting. Boring people, on the other hand, could ruin a conversation about um, the discovering of human life on Pluto. If you are interested, you will make it interesting. The second performance point, use a strong show opening or monologue. Be sure to do the following, okay? So focus on the topic, firstly. Engage the audience by forming a question. State your opinion or your position about a top talkable topic and explain your view through example, experience or storytelling. You'll remember a lot of what I'm saying now from when I started uh, teaching about how to hook the audience. OK, it's similar. Don't read entire prepared speeches on air. If you must read on air, don't make it sound like you're reading. OK, so try to do it as organic or as natural as possible. Number three, never be boring. Again, the same or again, it, um, similar to number one here. Get rid of boring guests immediately. Remember, if you're bored, it's boring. If a guest starts out great or was selected as an expert, but in fact turns out to be stiff, too nervous to clearly think, or too nervous to think clearly on air, or is in any other way non-communicative or inept as a storyteller, get rid of that guest. Remember, a lot of people might be really good experts off air, but as soon as you, you put them on air, it's like they get stage fright and they're so nervous, they really just can't speak on air. So immediately take that person off air, okay? Think about when you have been listening to radio and um, they have a lot of guests on air. How often have you checked your watch? Um, when that guest is talking or you've left the conversation, you've had like a mini vacation in your head at that point. If this is happening on air, there's a few direct questions that you can try to raise the energy level in the room. And if that doesn't help, you need to dismiss the guest. If this is a problem for you, because not everyone is good at things like that, you can have a prearranged signal with your producer, um, just like couples do at parties. Okay. 
news people can news people can be sent in news people can be sent in waving a copy saying they have to go on air right now or waving a copy okay so in other words you have to get your guest off air anything that allows you to shove the the boring guest to one side um, or out of the door rather is fair make a transition and immediately try to do something else Remember, you are probably more interesting than your boring guest. Be flexible and protect your on-air product. This is your show. You are in control, okay? If the guest is great, keep him or her for longer. So why is getting rid of a boring guest so difficult? It's surprisingly hard to speed the departure of a guest because we are trained from childhood to consider the feelings of other people. As professionals in polite, in polite society, we don't want to be rude, okay? But it's ultimately better to be abrupt or to seem rude with one guest or caller than to be impolite to an entire listening audience, boring them because we feel so uncomfortable cutting off the discussion on air. The audience, remember, the audience is under no obligation to be polite to you who is the host of the show, okay? Um, they feel free to leave immediately if, if things get dull, if they get bored. So they will leave your show if you don't get rid of your on-air guest. With live radio, it's especially difficult to ask the tough questions or to cut off a boring guest if that person is in the room. Unfortunately, you need to do it anyway, okay? You shouldn't promise a guest more than a few minutes of airtime. Your producer can explain the show's policy to them um, on the matter if need be. It is easier for some hosts to exercise that cutoff switch if the guest is on the telephone rather than live in studio. Try sacrificing a little sound quality by using a phone connection um, if this makes it easier for you to end an interview. The fourth performance point, don't take calls just because they're there. Guests and calls are simply tools for the host to use to make a show better. I would rather hear a strong on-air personality than a boring guest or caller, okay? We've spoken about this in class as well. It's up to the host to determine when a guest or a call gets boring. Some guests could be great for three hours, okay, because they're amazing storytellers or generators or reactors, but others are only good for five minutes, if even that. Some, call, some callers could go on for five minutes, but are only worthy of five seconds of on air. A good host and producer should be able to tell the difference and pace of the show accordingly, okay? Only use callers to enhance the show. Once again, it's your show. Only use callers and guests if they will make the show better. Number five, what if the interview or the topic goes wrong? Sometimes you ask the wrong question, it's going to happen, or you don't frame your talkable topic or engaging question well. Um, if you're not getting the desired response, perhaps it's time that you change your story a little or recompose the question to engage the audience differently. Don't be afraid to reset a topic going into or coming back from a break, okay? But don't repeat your topic exactly. Um, just add something new to it. Number six, you can change your mind. This is important. Your opinion may change as an issue evolves. This might be over days or even over weeks. Don't be afraid to change your opinion as more facts become available or if a caller or a guest persuades you with a strong enough argument to change your mind. Don't stick to your guns if you know you are wrong, okay? Remember, always tell the truth. And don't be afraid to admit you don't know something. You're not expected to have all the facts about every issue every time. Number seven there, take risks on air. Sometimes you head into a danger zone with a comment or a view um, or a decision about something that needs to happen on air. Understand that not everything you will say will be popular, even when it feels true to you. A lot of what you can get away with depends on your relationship with your management. Um, even more depends on your level of success. Proven personalities can get away with a lot more than someone who's who's simply starting off on a brand new show. 
if you know you're heading into a controversial or a gray area, sometimes it's better to ask permission from your boss first. A powerful show is not one where a host lives in fear of getting axed. Something for management to note though, if a, if a presenter does call you and let you know that they are about to make or to move into a potentially dangerous topic, make a decision. If you need to take a moment to consult a lawyer or another management member, do it quickly, okay? There's always this question where, where presenters want to know, is it better to beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission? That depends, okay? Um, trust your instinct or your gut feelings, but try not to hold yourself back from potentially powerful moments. Don't be so afraid of failure or getting into trouble that you lose your spontaneity and sense of discovery, risk, or adventure on air. Live radio is a live experience. So a good example here would be the broadcast executive, Mel Carmazin, who always backed multimedia performer Howard Stern. When they worked together at CBS Radio, no matter what Stern said, if he crossed the line and got the network into trouble, Mel paid the penalty fines. Um, as a manager, she believed in Howard and she believed in Howard and liked the profits generated from the show. He understood that talent can't be restricted, okay? If you want the great moments, you need to be able to take on the risk. Some talents, like Stern, have chosen to move their entire shows to alternative distribution systems. The reason for this, there's less risk of fines or public outrage if your programming comes via satellite, satellite or the internet. Alternative platforms are fairly unlimited when it comes to what language can be used, although many cable networks choose to maintain an over-the-air broadcast standard. Over-the-air terrestrial radio and TV continue to have limitations as to what words you can't broadcast. If you hire a presenter who is used to broadcasting in an unrestricted setting, make sure that they understand the standards that you expect and the risks you are and that you are not willing to assume to support their uh, creative content. The best managers would behave honorably. As a manager, if you tell your talent um, or your presenter it's okay to do a certain type of show, you are honor bound to live by that commitment until you mutually agree to change it. You can't fire um, a presenter for your mistake. So yes, occasionally presenters will do things that you would rather not have had them do. However, um, not all presenters, not all talent live on the cutting edge. Most operate between the safe and the daring, okay? Some of them you have to push towards the daring. But the more artistic and creative the talent, the greater the risks that artists are li likely to take. Um, the payoff can be enormous, but the cost to you might be your serenity and your security. Number eight, use your off switch. Master the use of the most difficult piece of equipment in the control room, which is the off switch on your microphone. Practice moderation. Learn to recognize when um, a piece is over and stop talking at that point. It's not as easy as it sounds, not by any means, but it's one of the things you need to learn. Okay, Remember about what we've spoken about in previous classes with regards to your out. Number nine, the day you wish you'd stayed in bed. Not every show is going to be your best show, not by a long shot. Even your favorite presenter has an occasional bad day. Sometimes you just can't hit the ball no matter what you do. Um, your rhythm might be off or you might not be feeling so well. When you've had a show that doesn't work, it's important to do a quick analysis for yourself. Try to see whether there's an easily identifiable reason um, that your show didn't work. Did you not get enough sleep? Were you hungry? Um, did you not prep the show well enough? Did you have a fight with your spouse or your former spouse before you went on air? If it's fixable, fix it. Do it differently next time. Perhaps you simply just had a bad show. You just did a poor job. Um, there are two things you can do now. 
you can choose to pick it apart over and over and over again and beat yourself up with um, an air check and make yourself feel terrible, thereby ensuring that you'll do probably do a worse job tomorrow, or you can let it go. Regular listeners who like you will forgive you for one bad show. Think about yourself when you listen to radio. If there's a show that had a couple of bad elements in it, but it's a presenter that you love, you will forgive them. Tomorrow, someone will be listening that has never heard you before, okay, or that might have missed that particular show. That person won't know that you had a bad show today, so forgive yourself and move forward. And then number 10, treat the staff you work with respectfully, okay? Whether you know it or not, they will have a lot of impact on your performance. The station staff can help you, the station staff can help you or sabotage you in a million ways. A miserable team will cost you more than you think. Looking at formatics, some presenters may view formatics as restrictive, but the audience likes the structure of on-air formatics. Listeners want to know to whom they are listening. Think about when you listen to a radio station. You want to know what station it is, what show it is, uh, who the presenter is if you're not sure who it is what song it is that's playing on air, okay? On-air personalities must learn to be creative within the confines of formatics. So the one thing we always try to do on air um, that we have been speaking about in the last couple of lessons also is trying to get your listener to listen for longer. So what are you doing? You are pushing an open door because you've already got their attention and you're just seeking a little more from them. How much more? We're going to try and set our target to five more minutes. So think about how we are as people. We're so busy dropping off uh, kids if we have kids um, or brothers or whatever it might be, judging phone calls, checking messages, thinking about how, we, how to say no to a holiday visit and listening to radio at the same time. Mental multitasking is at an all time high. We all know how much information we're bombarded with on a day-to-day -day basis, and based on that, how short our attention spans are. You want me now to listen to longer, to listen for longer. And if you might, if you ask me for another 15 minutes of my time, probably gonna say forget about it. But another five minutes, okay, let's try this. Keep going, I'm listening. If all of your listeners gave you five minutes more every day of a week your share would be moving into a positive direction. So how can you use performing? So how can you use formatics to get those extra five minutes? Number one, invite, okay? Don't tease and invite them like you meant it. Invite, don't tease and invite them like you mean it. Number two, invite them a mere five minutes ahead, okay? Similar to... Similar to a magician, don't do the full reveal. Keep something up your sleeve by inviting with a hook that tells your audience what's in it for them. Number four, invite them frequently. Invite five minutes more listening time um, at any time during the show when there's something that might be saying you might want to leave us now, okay? So for example, at the top of the hour, um, invite across the news and make people feel included in what's, what follows the news or promote what we're about to learn in the news. As you change topics or switch to something new, invite the audience to stay and tell them why it's going to be good. As you're going into a song, invite them for what's coming up after the song. Or prior to the next guest, invite the audience to listen in or to join in. Make an appointment. What if you decide you want to um, invite your audience more than five minutes ahead? That's called appointment listening. Jeremy Miller describes how, uh, how to create appointment listening to increase your station's ratings. You would do this by picking a single show highlight, not taking a couple of them, okay? You're going to give the listener the exact time that they can hear this specific piece. If they're interested, but you're vague on what time it's going to happen, they probably are not going to bother. 
tell people exactly when they can hear something and they might make the effort. Research supports this technique and it's easy to do, okay? Next up, you are invited. If you download a podcast or you watch a YouTube video or even, or even TV, you no longer have to come in. You no longer have to come in during the middle of a show, okay? Because you can digitally record your show or you can simply press play whenever you want to watch an episode and you can begin at the beginning. But live radio is still one place where you join the action while it is in progress, okay? So with live radio, you can still come in halfway through a conversation. So it's important that listeners feel that they can join you at any time and still be invited into your program. The next one, the overcoming resistance. Programmers around the world share a common frustration and ask the same question um, of presenters. Why don't you simply do the formatics as you are told? How hard can this be? We've spoken about this over and over again. And your presenter might come back with a comeback saying, you care more about the callers and the time checks um, than you do about content. A monkey or a robot can do formatics. I'm an individual. I got involved in what was happening at the moment. Okay, so some managers do take it too far and become, become obsessive about the number of times you did a time check or the number of times you mentioned the show or the radio station's name. Something you do need to remember is great stations are not built on hot clocks and contests. They're built on heart. So why rebel with formatics and forget to do them? The reason is that many on-air personalities um, don't believe it's important, okay? Because they already know who, because they remember, they already know who they are. You already know who you are um, and you already know where you are working. So it becomes boring to you to repeat um, your name and the station's uh, FM frequency and the station's frequency over and over again. So what is happening here? If the if you as a presenter does not understand the absolute importance of formatics, it's not going to be a priority for you. Ask a presenter how they would feel if someone heard their show in a cab and wanted to listen to them again at home because they were interested in them, um, but couldn't because they couldn't remember what the station was called or what your name was. Not giving your details and the station's details is like asking someone to find your house when you have no street sign. It is to everyone's benefit if a presenter understands how you as a listener will listen to them. Make it clear that the audience has a short attention span and often uses radio as background, meaning they listen with half an ear. As a last resort, if your presenter continually forgets to do formatics, try and help them out with produced elements. And then next there, credit where credit is. Remember that if you get given a RAM diary to fill in, you need to know what it was that you have been listening to. So if you are a presenter, you need to remember that if you want people to write down your show's name as the show that they listen to for a RAM diary, you need to repeat certain things. You need to repeat your name, the name of your show, the name of the radio station, okay? The FM frequency where they can find you on. Repetition is the way we learn and we memorize. So repeat and repeat and repeat until the audience and your, your until the audience know your details and the station or the show's details. Each format and radio station has a slightly different structure. They all do have one thing in common. Your listeners should never feel the pressure that you feel to execute formatics correctly. Okay, so we're going to turn to page 58 in our textbook now, but first I wanna go through this section. So don't use radio speak. Try not to use words and phrases that you say only when, you, when you're in front of a microphone. So something like segment or the program or the clock or the forecast, okay? So try to keep your formatics, try to keep your formatics as natural sounding as possible. 
always answer the question, why should someone listen to this? Um, only mention the clock if there really is a benefit in it for the listener. Remember that the formatic restrictions are our problems. Um, is my problem as the presenter, not your problem as the listener. They don't need to know when it's time for us to take an ad break, okay? They don't need to know when ads are coming up. The structure of your show is there for a reason, okay? Mostly to market your station. But listeners care only about what's interesting or relevant for them. Your audience should never feel your format. They should simply feel that they are spending some time with you. So for talk radio, the structure is more or less like the one on page 57, okay, the one that Alan um, Isensen uses. You'll see there's a gray block that says talk formatics. It starts there with open the hour with your name, the time, and the call letters. Do something short, do some short opening comments if you have any that day, which may or may not be your main topic. Launch into your monologue. So, for example, engage the audience with your opinion or position and storytelling. Ask the question. This is your tightly focused topic. Give out the phone numbers. Take a break using proper formatics. Use the term up next instead of take a break. Remember, take a break is a television term. We don't use it on radio. We'll say up next. Open the floodgates or rather the telephones after your first break. Reset the topic by asking the question going in and out of each subsequent break. Again, using the proper formatics. Formatics don't need to be dry and boring. If you do them well, they can become a creative and an exciting part of your show. So if we go back to this, so starting on page or reading page 58, um, the formatics tips from consultant Tommy Kramer. It's another great block there which reads, be sensitive to repetition. A good talent varies the way everything is done. The listener wants consistency, but not predictability. Even if, even if positioning phrases or branding should require, should require that things be said in the same way all the time, the talent can still vary the inflection of the words. Repetition becomes boring quickly, and is also an indicator of the deadly automatic pilot mentality that can bring down a talent or a station fast. Do your part. Keep the talent energized by pointing out good examples when they occur or freshening things up that might have become tired sounding. Okay, so in continuing with Tommy Kramer, here are some more specific ways to use formatics to engage your audience using his coaching handbook. The next one is pull the listener into the radio with you. So if you're saying it's 30 degrees out there, what are you telling me, the listener? You're telling me that I'm out there and you're not there, you're not out there with me. Okay, you're somewhere else. In reality, I'm at my desk or in a car or in my house and you are with me when I'm listening. So why now push me away? Avoid saying anything that's going to push me as the listener away, all right? Keep in mind that we're supposed to having, be having a conversation at the same place. Next, sell the benefit. Always sell the benefit of a show or a station. What is the benefit to me? Okay, so why am I listening? Then use real language. What is more effective? For further information and details, call whatever the number is, 0218881111. Or you want to know more, give me a call. How about it's just, just after 45 minutes after, it's just gone 45 minutes after the hour of 12 o'clock. Would you ever say that to me if I've asked you what the time is? Wouldn't you rather just look at your watch and go, it's quarter to one? That's how we speak. Talk on air the way you talk in real life. Connect with your listener. Tell me, don't read to me. Let your language and your manner, okay? Pull the listener into the radio. So tell me the story. Next, the rule of one. Do one main thing per break. Obviously, you do need to identify the um, station or and the station and the music. 
um, perhaps give the time and whatever your station's formatics are, but do that stuff briefly and then do your one thought you set out to do in this work. So what did we say about the Mexican bicycle wheel? One thought per link. Next, hit the target. Many stations, or a lot of stations find it helpful um, to draw up a specific profile um, of your listeners. So complete with a picture if it's possible, which you can then post in your on-air studio, perhaps behind the mic, so that your presenters can see who they are speaking to. And then you can talk about topics and things that will appeal to this one specific listener. Also, please keep it singular, okay? You're talking to one person and one person only. Don't say something like, if some of you are listening, or you guys, okay? Stick to one person, uh, so stick to singular. Next, promote anything of benefit coming up on your show. Be truthful. Instead of saying, I'll have tickets to give away in a few minutes, try this hour, you'll have a chance to win Lady Gaga tickets. If you tell me that something's coming up in the next few minutes and I only have 20 minutes before I need to be at school or at work or at an appointment, I'm going to be upset, okay? I'm going to be negative. If by the time I need to get out of my car, you still haven't said what you're about, or what you're going to say. So you still haven't spoken about the tickets again. But if you tell me it's coming up within the next 30 minutes and I know I only have 20 minutes, you've done expectation management. Never promote anything as coming up after the break. That's like saying you're going away. The next one, don't tell the listener what you think. It is annoying. Think about it. If someone tells you how you're feeling, what is your reaction? Mine is always, you don't know what I'm feeling or you don't know what I'm thinking. Okay. The same with if a, if a presenter tells you what, um, what you think. So instead of saying you'll have a great time, rather tell me why you like it. And rather tell me that you like it and why you like it or why some other people like it. So what you're doing now is you're letting me decide for myself. And then sell the dream first before you give the information. In advertising, they say sell the sizzle, not the steak. Seek an emotional link with the listener. Help me see why I want to win before I have, before I have to hear all the junk about how to do it. If you don't make me want what is being offered, there's no reason for me to care about all that technical information. Um, that's something that Apple did really well. They invested so well into the why of it that everything inside of an Apple versus a normal computer didn't really make a difference because they were so good at the why. So sell the dream first before you give the information. Okay. Next, have a roadmap. So know what your beginning, your middle and your end is for your story. Know how you're starting. Have your destination in mind, okay? Um, and then move on to your next element. And then how to edit phone calls. Keep the unnecessary parts of the calls off air. So that, okay, Jane, thanks for calling today. Okay, all that stuff can be done off air. Why? Because it's boring, it slows your momentum, and no one actually cares about that, okay? You're literally just wasting on air time. Instead, simply go straight to the point, get straight to the point, okay? The next one, formatics for callers. Dennis Clark used a specific format for calls that, for calls that go to, for calls that go to air on Ryan Seacrest show, okay? Each caller is identified by a name and place, and after they make their point, they'll get a brief and sincere acknowledgement of their call. So that's the standard format. And this continually doing the same thing, the same standard format, okay? So repeating that same standard format, lets callers know that this is a safe space for them to call, and they know what to expect in their phone call. So they never have to be scared about being embarrassed or humiliated on air because they know exactly what the formatics are like. Next up, reset the stage. So adopt what's called an egg timer attitude. Every couple of minutes, you briefly reset 
um, the stage for anyone who might simply now be joining in to listen to your show. If the listener can't quickly catch on, or ca catch up with what is happening on air, they might switch the station, okay? You might lose them. Break that habit of taking a break. We just spoke about it. So please don't use the word break. It comes from TV, um, where they regularly do stop the action and break away from programming to do other things. But because everything on your radio station is a part of your total format, um, you are almost never breaking away, okay? You as a presenter are not leaving and then coming back. You're staying there. Also, don't break away for news. Each time you tell um, a listener there's a break, they think that they too can break away. The whole show is yours. That includes the sport and the news and um, anything else that happens inside your show. Stations are rated not only on how many listeners show up, but also on how many listeners stay around, stick around, okay, on time spent listening, not only on cue. The mark of a professional is the ability to make every single word that comes out of your mouth while you are in, on air your own. That's important, okay? Don't panic if you need a moment. Have you ever listened to radio and they were just chattering aimlessly, continuously, um, without it necessarily even making sense. They're speaking extremely fast, they're rambling, and it's like they're casting about for thoughts or direction. The reason for this is that they've most probably been taught to keep the meter moving, so to keep speaking on air. One of those whatever else happens, keep talking moments. What can happen in that moment is that extreme fear for dead air, and guys, and it really is a fear, a fear, okay? There is an extreme fear from presenters for dead air. Um, but that extreme fear can provoke meaningless um, manic episodes, which will completely make you lose your confidence, which will completely make you lose your audience, okay? Because me as the listener, I've tuned out the moment you started rambling. Do not be afraid of a moment of silence on air. The listener will understand and it beats the alternative. So don't panic. Take that pause if you need a few seconds to collect your thoughts, okay? Taking a moment of silence on air can also become a, a really good tool because what happens when we hear um, silence on air or when we hear if there was a very big chattering aloud around us and suddenly it's just silent, it immediately catches our attention. If you have a powerful message, you can incorporate this one or two seconds of dead air, okay, or silence, just to bring your message across. Content plus formatics equals ratings. What does that mean? It means I have my content piece about the thing I need to talk about, and I have my formatics, okay? Again, my Mexican bicycle wheel, formatics, so my obligations, my one thought per link, and my obligations, and that equals people listening to me. How? How does it equal people listening to me? Before each break, remember to tease what is coming up next or to reset your talkable topic or engaging question. Involve your audience. Use a cliffhanger to keep them coming back for more, okay? Staying through um, an ad break or just listening longer. And then after each break, briefly reset your topic. And a reset should include your name, your frequency, your topic, so ask your focus question or your tease or your hook or your throw forward, um, preferably one that everyone listening to will have a burning desire to ask to answer, okay? Provide your phone number, do a time check if it's relevant in your formatics. So at first, working with formatics can be a struggle. We realize that, okay? Educate yourself regularly. Keep practicing and you will notice improvement. When someone comes to you, that moment someone comes to you and says you make it all sound so easy, you will know that you have mastered formatics. A lot was said in this lesson. So just to reiterate the key lecture points that came out now. Number one, radio communication utilizes the theater of the mind and the people on the radio must talk in pictures. If I close my eyes, I need to see what it is that you are telling me. The same principle applies to all material written and produced for on-air use as well. Number two, when you listen to the radio, you will notice that there is talent that sounds spontaneous, natural, 
easy. And there will also be talent um, who seem pained and uncomfortable when things go astray. And they will make you feel uneasy to hear them react to a situation that way. Number three, seasoned professional talent always gives the impression that they are in control no matter what. Number four, this skill can be learned by practicing elementary performance points and by learning how to self-correct. Number five, some talent may view formatics as restrictive, but the audience likes the structure of the station formatics. Listeners want to know to whom they are listening. And number six, on-air personalities must learn to be creative within the, within the confines of formatics. Okay, and that brings me to the end of this lecture about formatics. We're going to continue with formatics in our next lesson, which will be a live lesson again, because what we'll be doing that live lesson is we will be creating links using formatics, using everything that you, you've learned up until now, including your formatics, okay? And with that, I say goodbye for now.